Um, whenever you're talking about a subject like divorce, um, it's difficult because people already, um, it's such a charged topic and people already kind of, um, come to their own conclusions. And so it's just kind of hard to do that because you can't really look at divorce, um, in a objective reason, uh, oriented discussion because if you've ever considered divorce or been in the middle of divorce or had a divorce or whatever, um, if your parents have ever gotten a divorce, you know it's, it's not an objective thing. It's something that um, definitely does uh, wound us. It's important to be honest in any discussion about divorce. Whether you want to get a divorce or not, it's important to remember that when when you get a divorce, it's not going to make everything better. It's just going to um, remove a part of the problem, if that makes sense. So let's say you have these two people who are, who are married and, and, and having a problem, and basically you're just saying, okay, I want to ensure that we're never able to fix this in the future. So I'm removing this from this. So sometimes it is better to do that thing. Okay, all right. Um, I personally am I'm very much against divorce um, just because I've never seen anything good happen from divorce. However, I understand there's a lot of people with different opinions, so I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. This is just a real quick look about um, the idea of uh, should I get a divorce. So let's start with reasons not to because chances are if you're watching a video like this, you're already thinking about reasons to get a divorce. Let's look at reasons not to get a divorce. Number one, no, it, I did it wrong. Um, if you fell out of love, well, that really doesn't make sense because love is a choice. Um, what do you mean to say that you guys have been fighting lately or you're not attracted to them or it's kind of, kind of an ambiguous way of saying, I don't want to put forth the effort into this relationship. It's really not something that um, carries any weight, yet we kind of tell ourselves that it carries weight. So eh. if you're trying to get a divorce because you fell in love with somebody, it's it's time to remember <laughs> that you made a promise to them, and you should probably try to work it out and keep going. Well, I tried. Well, evidently you didn't because your foot was halfway out the door. Um, once again, I'm trying not to be overly, overly judgmental here, um, so I'm really sorry if I'm coming out that way. Um, number two, if you're bitter or angry with them. See, the problem with divorce is that we take ourselves with us. So if, if we get into a relationship that we can't um, resolve, can't make uh, better, can't end on a good note, it will follow us to other relationships. And that's just a fact of life. Um, you have to learn to forgive and be intimate with people. Um, that's difficult. See, a lot of times... Um, we just don't want to be hurt, and so we kind of put up this wall between us and other people. And when we do things like get divorces, we think, hey, I just hate this one person, and I'm just trying to divorce this one person. But the truth is, when we get a divorce, it puts up walls between us and other people. First off, that the friends that you made with that person, those relationships are going to be affected. Let's say, for instance, you were really close with the mother-in-law. Well, obviously that's going to be a factor of you know, maybe things not – being great in the future. And uh, my dog's going crazy. <laughs> Anyways, um, and it's always a danger um, with divorce to get hard hearted. Um, and what I mean by that is just become kind of a bitter person. Uh, a lot of times, people who, who go through divorces, they feel a distance between themselves and God. Not necessarily because. Um, God, you know, removes himself from them, although that, I guess, could be a factor. Um, but because there's just something in them where they detach themselves from God, almost like um, spiritual guilt from a physical decision. Uh, it, it, it's a lot more complicated than that, so I'm trying not to make things overly comp over, overly simple because I, I'm trying to be understanding here. There, there's a lot of reasons people get divorces, and I'm, I'm really trying not to um, come off as judgmental. Um, I'm having a hard time, though. <laughs> um, and a third reason um, not to get a divorce is if you are abandoning the other person for someone else. The amount of low character 
that is required to abandon someone for someone else is just unbelievable. You, you see a lot of times guys do this where they just throw the girl away and look for a younger, better model. You know, the, the thing is, in the Bible, it talks about how God hates divorce and everything. And in most of those situations, now obviously, I know it says, the Bible says God hates divorce. Okay, all right. But in most of the situations where God is talking about divorce, it's specifically where people were just throwing someone away. And then they became kind of like a plague in society. People didn't want to touch a divorced person. And then uh, heaped onto that problem was that people were switching out spouses for this other spouse. Um, that's why it says, if you divorce someone and then get remarried, you make them a uh, adulterer. Because he's talking about divorcing uh, for the sake of, of remarriage and stuff like that. Um, so can you ever get remarried if, uh, as a Christian if you get a divorce? That's up in the air, and I don't really have time to talk about that here. This really isn't meant to be a, as it applies to Christians, but as it applies to people. I'm trying to really highlight things that are applicable, really, um, any area of life, any religion, any political views, just things that apply in general. So some consequences of divorce, which it's always important to keep consequences of our actions in mind before we make any decision. Uh, it's the same for if you're going to get married. You always want to keep the consequences of that in, in mind. What are the consequences of having children? What are the consequences of switching jobs? So there's always these these little factors that we need to take into advance about, uh, take into account about what are going to be the consequences of my actions. Um, divorce always negatively affects kids every time. Um, and really in a slew of different possible ways. One way is you can transfer your anger and bitterness towards the spouse to your children and upset that relationship, which is never a good idea to do because kids need their mothers and kids need their fathers. And kids really need a stable environment, and it's not fair for them to expect them to be born into a family that they didn't ask to be born and then to just take away all sense of security when they didn't ask for that. Now, there's going to be a little bit different problem if the kids have already moved out, but there is still going to be a problem. And kids typically, you know, things don't go great. They, they take sides and just bad things. So make sure you're not trying to get the kids on your side. You're, you're trying to do what's best for the kids' sake, too, not just for yourself. One of the big things I see as a pastor with people getting divorces is people just kind of being selfish and looking out for themselves. Uh, most of the time, that's the divorces that I run into. There are exceptions, but that's the majority of them. Um, so how does it affect kids? It affects them mentally. You see them developing with, you know, maybe depression or anxiety, stuff like that. You see them, it, it, it affects them socially. You see them doing things like, you know, uh, ping their pants and stuff. You know, just things that just are out of character or out of age. Um, oftentimes kids will revert to a, a different time when things are maybe a little bit happier for them. Um, if you kind of get what I'm saying, um, emotionally, um, they'll they'll a lot of times have anger problems or other flip of side of that they won't be able to, to uh, sustain a a happy and healthy relationship themselves not always the case but everybody's di re re reacts differently and it just has an effect on people um saying off it makes you a liar um, if you have a divorce you most of the time are a liar you said that you would do something and then you didn't do that thing so that makes you a liar and if we don't live with honor what are we? See, when we make a commitment, our honor is at stake. Our name is at stake. And we can't just write that off because we got tired of it. I mean, that's that's your name. Aren't you really want your good name to just be thrown away? Um, you, and another thing, which these next two points are going to go together. You learn to live, live life guarded and you become bitter and defensive. Now, let me kind of break that apart. First off, you learn to live, uh, live life guarded. It's very hard to uh, be intimate with somebody, to let somebody know you, to be known by somebody, to, to, to know someone else. It's very hard to get past that guard. Um, also, along with this, you just kind of become bitter, and you'll find yourself snapping at other people. Because bitterness isn't content. If you divorce someone because you can't see eye to eye with them, and then you think that it's not going to affect your other relationships in life, you're wrong. There's just something about divorce that, that, that does something up here. It's hard to, hard to explain, but if you've ever gone through it, 
you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially if you've ever had your parents get a divorce. There's just something that happens there. Um, you get very defensive. Everything it seems like an attack. So you just kind of, I mean, you constantly think that everybody's just talking about you behind your back and thinking about you and, and, and you know, everybody's against you and stuff. And maybe some people genuinely are. But still, there's just this, this ongoing tug of war. Um, between being intimate with people and being distant from people. Um, a lot of times with divorce, people get divorced thinking that they can just move on and be happy. But the thing is, most of the time with divorce, you really can't move on with life. There's always something that holds you back. And even if you allow yourself to get distracted with things, it, it'll still bounce around the back of your head and you'll still always struggle with that, that thing, whatever it is. Um, that w was inevitably tied in with the divorce. And if you've been through divorce, you already know what I'm talking about, so there's really no reason to explain that. Um, it, future relationships become more difficult. It, it's very... Um, when somebody's been divorced, it, the chances of them being in a happy, healthy marriage that lasts drops um, significantly. Um, relationships are always... You know, it's always everybody else's fault, and, and it just... Statistically speaking, it's very difficult um, to maintain a healthy uh, relationship in the future after divorce. Um, it's like when, when we cheat on someone, we think, oh, this is going to be better, and then after we've already done it, it's like, oh, that was a huge mistake. And you realize that it, it changes you. When you become the kind of person who gets a divorce, there's something in your character that changes, and you start seeing yourself differently. Um, so, so real quickly, just two main things I want to say about reasons to get a divorce. Um, if there, it's an abusive or dangerous situation, and if they abandon you. If they abandon you, there's not much you can do. And the thing is, I've actually known a lot of people who got, divor and got uh, divorced because their spouse just left them. Yeah. There's not much you can do there. I mean, marriage is two people making an agreement. So if one person decides not to make that agreement, there's not much you can do. But with that, I would like to leave you with a few closing thoughts. First off, everyone thinks their situation is Everyone who considers getting a divorce thinks that nobody has ever gone through something like this. Nobody is ever able to, to keep their marriage alive after something like this. Everybody says that. But here's the thing. Yes, your situation is not unique. It's not unique. And yes, it can be fixed. Even in the, in the case of adultery, it can be fixed. Um, it takes time and it takes patience and forgiveness and that kind of stuff. But it can be fixed. Um... The problem with things like divorce and really a lot of other things in life, a lot of other things in life, this applies to more than just divorces, we kind of just make up our minds and then gravitate to people who will tell us what we want to hear. Okay, this is what I've chosen to believe, so now don't say anything against that because this is what I've chosen to believe. I'm not going to hear it, and it's like we close ourselves off to reason. And this, does, once again, isn't just about divorce, this is about life in general. Um, and so be careful with stuff like that. When, oftentimes when we're talking about divorce, people have already decided I'm going to get a divorce. And so they say, okay, I'll try to make themselves feel better about it, but then their foot's still one foot, they still have one foot out the door the whole time. Um, and it's very hard to backtrack once you've already made up, out, made up your mind up here, I'm going to get a divorce. So keep that in mind. Um, so what if you've already been divorced? The damage is done. God, here's the thing. Regardless of whether you are a religious person or not, God wants you to heal. God wants to move you past this. And guess what? Even if you don't believe in God, people want to know you. People want you to move on and grow. People want to know you. So don't always push people away. Um, it's, it's difficult. You're going to have to push yourself. But if, if you try, you can get over a divorce. Um, and then if you are considering divorce or are in the midst of divorce, let me move this. Boop. So long as it depends on you, do what's right. I see a lot of Christians saying, well, they were going to divorce me anyway, so I did a preemptive strike and divorced them first. Well, hold on. Hold on. Try to make things work. Be the bigger person and be the better person. And then when all is said, at least you'll know I did what was right and you won't get bitter. You'd be surprised just the – even if a divorce – I mean a marriage is, is doomed to failure and it ends up in divorce no matter what's being done – You'd be surprised the difference that happens inside of someone when they do things acting right and when they do things acting bitter. You can't make big life decisions because you're angry, because you've been hurt, because of... I mean, if that was the case, nobody would ever do anything. People are always getting hurt. You have to, 
you know, choose to be the kind of person who's going to do what's right and who's going to forgive. So I hope that that's kind of helped you to think a little bit about this, a little bit about this, and, uh, you know, think twice about getting a divorce. It really is something that you can't just walk away from. So.